Hey everybody, this is Kevin Wallace, Double CCIE and creator of the CCNA Writing and Switching Version 3 Complete Video Course. And in this video, you're going to learn about a new CCNA topic. It's a quality of service topic. It's all about trusting devices. When we connect something into a Cisco Catalyst switch and that device is sending some sort of a quality of service marking into that switch, should we trust it or not? Well, it depends. Maybe we want to trust an IP phone, but we don't want to trust somebody's laptop that gets plugged in. How can we trust selected devices? That's what you're going to learn in this video. Stay tuned. In our last video, we talked a lot about marking traffic. We talked about marking at layer two with a COS value and marking at layer three with a DSCP value. However, we might have a challenge. Maybe there are some devices in our network that's going to send a marking into, let's say, a switch like we have here on screen. Maybe we want to trust a Cisco IP phone or a Cisco IP camera, maybe a Cisco telepresence endpoint, but maybe we do not want to trust a traditional client, just a PC plugged into the switch. What can we do to selectively trust markings coming into a switch? Maybe those markings are coming in from the enterprise cloud. Well, the good news is our Cisco Catalyst switches give us the ability to trust devices based on the device identity. The question is, how do we know it's a Cisco IP phone plugged into us? How do we know it's a Cisco telepresence endpoint? And the answer is CDP. That's right. The Cisco Discovery Protocol is going to identify to the switch that I'm a Cisco IP phone, I'm a Cisco IP camera, I'm a Cisco telepresence endpoint. And by the way, your version of Cisco IOS that's running on your Cisco Catalyst switch, that's going to determine what devices your switch can recognize. But just as a few examples, these are some typical devices that a switch might trust. And maybe we do not want to trust that client. So traffic coming in from the Cisco IP camera, and the phone, and the telepresence endpoint, that can be trusted. In other words, we're going to trust, let's say, the COS marking, but we don't trust the marking coming in from the client. When markings come in from the enterprise, perhaps we want to trust a DSCP marking as opposed to a COS marking. Remember, a COS marking does not survive a router hop. In fact, that Cisco Catalyst switch, it has the ability, depending on the model of switch, it has the ability to take a COS value and automatically remark it to a corresponding DSCP value. Let's go out to a live interface and get a better sense for how this works. All right, we're sitting here on switch SW2, and let's take a look at what we're connected with right now. I'm going to do a show CDP neighbors command. And in addition to being connected to a couple of switches, you can see that I'm connected to a Cisco IP phone. It says right here that it's an IP phone. I also know that it's an IP phone because of this SEP. That stands for Celsius Ethernet phone. Back in the mid-1990s, Cisco got into the IP telephony business by buying a company named Celsius that started with an S and Celsius Ethernet phone that kind of carried over. And that's why it's showing up like this in our show CDP neighbors command. But we were connected to a Cisco IP phone and maybe I want to trust Markings coming from that phone. Remember, a phone is going to automatically mark at layer two. It's automatically going to mark at layer three both the signaling packets as well as the voice over IP media packets. So I want to do this for interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 24. Before I do that, though, let me show you how we can turn on quality of service globally for this switch. We need to do this before we get into any other sort of quality of service configuration. We're going to go into global configuration mode and we'll say MLS. QoS, that turns it on. That flips the virtual switch, if you will, to turn on quality of service capabilities. And just by turning that on, we get this ability to remark a COS value at layer two with a DSCP value at layer three. If we're trusting a COS value, that is, let's see what those markings default to. Let me back out and say, show MLS QoS maps. And I'm going to look at the mapping from a COS value to a DSCP value. And you can see, for example, that if I come in with a COS value of a three, which is what we might use for a signaling protocol as we're setting up a voice or a video call, that's going to be remarked by the switch. If I'm trusting a COS value, it's going to be remarked at layer three with a DSCP value of 24. Now let's see how I can go into this interface, fast Ethernet 0 slash 24 and say, I want to trust a COS value, but then I'm going to add a qualifier to that. I'm going to say, I'm going to trust a COS value if and only if it comes from a Cisco IP phone. So let's go into 
global configuration mode and then into interface fast ethernet 0 slash 24. And here's a common misconception. Many people think that we go right for that command where we say, trust the device Cisco IP phone. That's not enough. We need to first say, what marking are we trusting? Are we trusting the COS marking coming from that phone? Or are we trusting the DSCP marking coming from that phone? Well, normally coming from a phone, we're going to be trusting the COS value. So I'm going to say MLS, QoS, trust. Let me give you some context sensitive help. You see that we can trust an IP precedence value. Remember, that was the three leftmost bits of our toss byte. The DSCP value, the six leftmost bits of our toss byte, or a COS value, which was at layer two. It was those three bits that we find inside of a .1Q trunks tag bytes inside of the VLAN field on an ISL trunk or inside of the priority field if we're doing a .1P marking. But that's a layer two marking and these are layer three markings. Or I could say trust a specific device, but I want to say first that I want to trust COS markings. MLS, QoS, trust, COS. Now I can say only trust that COS value if and only if it came from a Cisco IP phone. Here's how we do that. I can say MLS, QoS, trust, device, let's give some context sensitive help. And we see that we could trust a Cisco IP phone. And we know it's a Cisco IP phone because CDP told us so. We know it's a Cisco telepresence device if that's what we have or a Cisco IP camera because the Cisco discovery protocol told us. Now let's say MLS QS trust device, Cisco hyphen phone. Now we're going to be trusting that marking coming in from a Cisco IP phone. And if I have a PC attached to that phone, many phones have a PC port where you can sort of daisy chain a PC into the back of a phone. If a marking is coming from that PC, we can not trust that, but we can trust it if it's coming from the phone itself. And by the way, depending on your version of Cisco iOS, depending on your switch model, you even have the ability sometimes to say, if you want to trust markings coming from the PC attached to the phone. But in this video, I just wanted to show you how we could go into an interface and say, I want to trust a specific device for a specific marking. So two steps, we say, which marking are we trusting? Is it going to be COS? Is it going to be DSCP? And then we say, trust this marking if and only if it's coming from this device. And we know it's coming from that device, thanks to Cisco Discovery Protocol. If you want to learn even more about Cisco routing and switching technologies, just click the link in the description or on the right side of the screen and I'll send you more training videos. And also, if you don't want to miss any of my YouTube videos, be sure and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.